um, then we can get uh, started with this talk about trees, no B trees, and uh, the finding of Postgres through PostGIS. Let's give a hand to our great speaker, Johannes Paul. Just have a tiny problem with the computer. Somehow it got stuck. <laughs> uh, it's start, but um, basically uh, I do this all in my spare time. I uh, work for a company that does software for hotels. And um, while uh, this has nothing to do with my company at all, I just uh, work uh in this in my spare time and it started with my neighbor who came over and said well you work with computers you can help me <laughs> may have happened to some of you and um then he started telling me about his idea which is he works with trees and um in his uh, work, he collects data of trees, about 100 data of each tree. And he has a database of about um, 1,000 or even more trees in his database. And uh, he wants to create a database that contains all the databases of all the people who work like him. So basically all trees in Germany that are monitored uh, should be in that database. And um, now I hope it will work. Okay, so uh, this is my LinkedIn uh, contact if you want to contact me. And as I said, my neighbor came over and told me about this. So why don't we make one database that contains all the trees? The idea behind it is, uh, sorry. Um, the idea behind it was to, uh, let me just check here. So uh, the idea behind this is uh, to have a database freely accessible on the internet and uh, people should be able to see how healthy which types of trees are in which area. So for example, if you realize in your area all the oak trees are dying, maybe it's a better idea not to plant oak trees again, but a different type of uh, trees. And in this map, you should uh, see uh, the uh, data of all the trees. And then you can select which trees are healthy in your area and then um, create better trees uh, or plant trees that grow better. Actually, he was in quite a hurry and said, well, this whole project should work within six weeks. Six days would be better. And uh, not really something realistic, but I felt a bit pressured through it and um, then decided to rush through things, which was a mistake. I should have taken more time to uh, get the basics. But... Uh, to start, I looked for a database that could handle the uh, geolocation data well, which is why I picked 
postures and through postures I found postress and then settled for this. Then uh, how do we get the data in the database? Um, just import some CSV files, so shouldn't be that hard, but there was a really big number of uh, problems. Like uh, you can see here, uh, the Latin name of the tree is Liquidava species, but uh, in many instances it was not written species, but sp dot or spec dot or whatever. And I had to find a way to uh, find all the trees that have the same actual name, but are spelled in different ways. And not just uh, such things, but actual uh, spelling mistakes as well. Or I found trees that were called Brücke, which is bridge in German. And he said, well, that's not actually a tree, it's a bridge that shows me where the actual tree is. So that's not really a tree I should put on the database. Uh, then he has uh, various uh, fields that are comments. And first he wanted to have all the comments in the database. Then we found out some of the comments contain complete emails, including all the email addresses, including actual home addresses. So we said, no, we won't include any of these comments. And then there uh, are at least five different systems who are used to collect this data. So we have at least five different uh, systems to import. And at least one of them doesn't have any geodata at all. So we can't use those. Uh, probably a mistake by the one who exports the data, but at the moment it's useless for us. And then the next issue were projections. Uh, if you have never heard of it, like I did, uh, it may be quite confusing that there are so many and which one should I pick? Which one covers Germany well? Uh, others and finally i settled for four three two six and uh, i found an interesting site that shows what can happen if you use the wrong projection uh, you can see europe in a normal projection on the left side and in an australian projection on the right side so it can actually be very distorting so finding the correct one is essential or you can't find the trees where they actually are. So is the import finally done? Well, luckily PG admin, which many people don't like to use, but uh, it has a nice feature, uh, which is the geometry viewer where you can check if your data is imported correctly. So let's see, uh, there are no really trees in Germany, but there are some here in Somalia. Why is that? Well, when we look closer, we see them like this. Actually, they should be like this because the exporter confused X and Y uh, columns. So I imported them correctly, but uh, they were named wrongly. So suddenly they were in Somalia. Uh, when I had settled this, I finally started to import the complete data, not just the geography. And got a table like this, where many will say, well, that's not really a database table. No, it was just a raw import with all the data. And then I went through each of the columns and uh, searched for each entry in this column. 
then check if this entry was already in the table. If so, I used the ID of that entry. And if not, I added it to the uh, table. And I did this with all the uh, entries in that column. So I got things like this, where I have the ID of various entries in a column. And these IDs are then used in the actual table and not the content anymore as it should be. So these are some examples of columns. On the left, you see the type of the tree, what it looks like, more like a heart shaped or a ball or whatever. And on the right, there are some descriptions of what the uh, tree looks like. It's a single tree or a group of two or three or whatever described, but all of these are just used through their indexes, not through the actually content. And then it looks like this. We have for each column always an uh, index. And uh, the ID of the entry in the actual table for that column. Then we can see the trees on a map. And I have used the, uh, the vitality uh, attribute of the trees to color them in five different colors so that you can see at the first glance which trees are healthy and which not. And if you click on any of the trees, you can get the 100 attributes of each tree. Here are three examples where you could uh, scroll down and then get the rest of the attributes. And for the future, it's planned to have uh, also the history data that you can go back in each tree to see how was it last year or the, the year before so that you see if it is getting healthier or if it's about to die. Then uh, we also added layers to the uh, presentation uh, that you can see, for example, how dry the area is or how much wind it uh, gets or how sunny it is and things like that. Uh, many uh, layers are added. And here are some examples of how this is done in open layers. And here is one example where you can see uh, the uh, liquidity in the uh, ground, which affects the uh, trees as well. And on the left, you can also see uh, the start of the query mechanism, which should be extended a lot because the idea is to allow anyone who wants to use the data to search for any combination of the 100 attributes to find the trees he's looking for. So for example, find all oak trees that have a sunburn and have uh, damaged roots uh, that are five kilometers from Frankfurt or something like that. So with that, I'm already through. Are there any questions? How many trees are there in the database? Uh, in his database are about 3,000, uh, but uh, he says everybody who works like him has a database of about uh, three, four, 5,000 trees. So uh, his assumption is that uh, the database will contain about a billion trees when all the data is entered. Yeah, I have a question here. So um, you see when you have uh, the GPS, sometimes they show you that you are getting to a wrong 
point and it's actually not a roundabout but it's a crossing point because they updated the street but the maps doesn't get updated mm -hmm. i guess for the trees is exactly kind of the same thing you find the trees then you go and the trees are not there for instance or there are more trees mm -hmm. how do you the team keeps the data updated do you build up an explicit application that can put information already in the format that you need because you have to go through all the stuff to kind of clean up the data and something like that but how is the updating of the data um, as i said there are about uh, five different systems that they use each uh, community says which system they want to use and then uh, those people who go out in the field uh, have a tablet with one of those uh, systems installed and this tablet uh, automatically gets the gps data of the tree when they are out in the field to examine it and then all the data is added to the tree uh, in the tablet and then sent to the database hi uh, is the database publicly available or is it open only for it's, specific uh... it's planned to be freely accessible for everyone um, it's mostly interesting probably for communities who plan to uh, plant new trees but uh, anyone who wants to check should be able to do so but i'm not there yet <laughs> Hi, I'm Stefan Keller. I'm doing that stuff since 20, 20 years. I mean, not counting trees, but, but counting everything in OpenStreetMap yeah, mm -hmm. using, using PostGIS. There are about, about 26, um, 26 million trees in OpenStreetMap, but not with 100 attributes. Um, That's, that's like exactly the what, point. What, yeah. what you did. So I still suggest to synchronize and, uh, and and somehow um, synchronize each database so that uh, you, you get the information there is a new tree and 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 vice versa yeah, you put yes. the the main the main tags the main attributes into OpenStreetMap, so it's a mutual mutual benefit probably yes uh, i have been to foskis in hamburg uh, in spring and uh, spoken there with several people, for example, from the town of Hamburg, where they have a tree cataster uh, publicly available already, but they only have five attributes per tree. So that is not something we can import, but if we have the data in our database, uh, we could also uh, share it with uh, OpenStreetMap and then see how it uh, goes on from there. But I'm not sure that OpenStreetMap really wants that much data on each tree. So we would need to find uh, out which data they are interested in uh, so that we could export that. And another uh, thing that I was told that Foskis was something I didn't think of, uh, but they said, well, if we then have a map of some million or even a billion trees it would also be a great uh, training model for uh, ki uh, ai uh, applications that want to find out which type of tree grows where looking at satellite pictures or something like that so that could also be a use case in the future but first i need to get it running Uh, hi. So, how did you go about getting the data, the geographic data, out of Postgres and into your web app to display it? What kind of tool and techniques? Were uh, I use a combination of GeoServer and Open Layers. GeoServer uh, shows the data, and Open Layers adds the layers that I showed earlier, like uh, here the the clouds or uh, wind data or whatever, so that anyone can pick which layer he wants to use and uh, compare it with the data of the trees. Any further questions? Um, yeah, your database is rather small, um, but 
Do you have any observations with uh, indices, even combined indices with spatial data? Uh, not for now, because I wasn't sure which indices would work best with this uh, idea that anyone should be able to use any combination of 100 parameters to send queries. So then it's a bit difficult to say which indexes to create it, which would make sense. I assume once we have it running and uh, people start using it, uh, that will become more obvious to see where most queries are and which indices might make sense and which not. Any other further questions? Well, oh, okay. You could take a look at pg underscore features serve. Yes, I've seen that as well. Replace Geo server, nothing against Geo server, but mm -hmm. to, so you get rid of Java and another bunch of server. I thought that might be easier to use, but I didn't have the time to look into it yet. But if anybody has time and wants to collaborate, I'm open to anything. <laughs> Uh, as far as I understand, your current target is only Germany. It is in Germany. Uh, is there any plan to extend to other countries or other regions? If uh, there is data on trees available in other countries, sure. I don't know uh, how the situation is in other countries, but in Germany, it is required by law that all trees that are next to a street or in a parking lot or whatever are monitored once or twice each year so that measures can be taken before a branch falls off and kills someone or something like that. I don't think that's uh, common in many countries, but in Germany it's by law and therefore all trees are monitored and could be entered. Okay, if there's no further takers, then I will uh, ask a question. Um, are you using any post-GIS post features apart from the, um, well, a box filtering or stuff like that? No, I'm basically using uh, create a point from this data for this tree and then uh, find points near any other point like Frankfurt or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and so if you look uh, in wiki.wiki.osm.org, wiki there are crazy much um, projects around with trees. With trees, that, I mean, your project is rather government related and that has potential for a whole Europe or something. But uh, there is monumental trees, for example, a map of monumental trees worldwide. Uh, I found by looking at wiki.osm.org and I heard about Brazilian project uh, year, years ago who imported also the trees with all the species and on but not 100 attributes as uh, because mm -hmm. yeah so keep your database that's what i would would, would say but there are so many tree related projects around uh, mm -hmm. that's my feeling well any other questions in that case um thank you for your talk maybe short but quite interesting Thanks a lot. Okay.